Porchester Castle is set within the walls of one of the best preserved Roman forts in Europe, built on low-lying land that protrudes into Portsmouth Harbour. It may not be a place you're familiar with, so join us for a blustery walk around this historic fortress and the charming Castle Street, where we find quaint thatched and Georgian houses in the village of Porchester. We've travelled to Portsmouth many times, either to cross over to the Isle of Wight on the White Link Ferry or to visit the Gumwolf Quay shopping outlets. But until a recent visit to find and explore the birthplace of Charles Dickens, which you can see in a separate video, we had no idea the castle was here. Hidden in plain sight, so to speak, it's easily seen from the main road that heads into Portsmouth. Somehow we'd missed it. We drove to the castle utilising the pay and display car park just outside the stone curtain walls of the fort. Jumping out of the car you can appreciate just how high they are. At 6.1 metres 20 feet, they would have provided a formidable protection. Base, limestone, slabs, flint and brick make up the lower portions of the walls. They were repaired and raised in medieval times but are still largely the original Roman walls. It's not clear when they first built this fort, but Roman coins excavated on the site date from the late 3rd century, giving an indication of the timeline. It was then known as Portus Aderni. What is clear is that the Romans needed to protect the harbour from seaborne invaders, and this was the perfect site to set up defences. In fact, they would do this right along the southern coast of Britain. One incredible example of Roman engineering stands at Dover Castle where the 2,000-year-old Pharos can still be seen today, a Roman lighthouse with a fiery beacon lighting the way, helping their vessels navigate the waters and guiding the galleys to shore. You can watch our tour on the incredible Dover Castle, already available on our channel to find out more. D-shaped towers were positioned around the fort, so sentries could see in all directions, at one time 20 in total. The evolution of the fort has seen some of them disappear now. By the 5th century, the Roman Empire was no more and the fort fell into the hands of the Saxons who had invaded England. They named it Portus Cesta, and that name later morphed into Porchester. The Saxons settled a village within the fort walls and excavations have provided a wealth of artefacts from the Roman and Saxon periods. In the 9th century, King Alfred the Great was creating a large defensive network along the coast. These were known as burrs. They were designed to defend the Kingdom of Wessex from Viking attacks, and Porchester was one of several locations chosen. There are now two main entrances into the fort, and this is the Land Gate. Most of this entrance was remodelled from the Roman Gate in the 1390s, with a vaulted passageway and accommodation above. It's worth noting you don't need a ticket to walk around the grounds of the fort, a ticket is only required to explore inside the castle. The biggest changes to the fort came after the Norman Conquest in 1066, needing new defences from foreign attack and closer to home from those who wanted the Saxons back, King Henry I commissioned the first part of the tower in the northwest corner, creating an inner bailey built in the form of the Norman keep we see here in around 1130 AD. It rose in height in the first 20 years, adding additional floors, but didn't reach its towering 30 meter full height till the 1320s. Henry also built St Mary's Church in the Outer Bailey. Built of Isle of Wight stone by Norman Masons in the late 1120s, it was given by Henry I to Augustinian monks led by a prior, and so it became St Mary's Priory. There were a number of buildings surrounding the church, but there's no trace of those now. In the mid-12th century, the monks moved on to Southwick, but today it's still the local parish church. We would have loved to have taken you inside, but there was a christening going on.
To enter the castle, we approach the gatehouse and moat. In the Middle Ages, the moat would have encircled the castle both inside and outside the fort. Fed by the sea, it would have been a much deeper and wider defence than we see today. Let's look inside and find out how King Richard II left his mark on Porchester Castle. English heritage looks after the entire fort and castle, all but the parish church. For those with membership, you can head inside for free, otherwise a ticket can be purchased. See opening times and prices here. We are now in the heart of this small castle, the Inner Bailey. And whilst it might not appear to be one of the more important castles of the realm, royalty visited often and Henry II used it as a place from which he embarked on travel to his other territories in France. Richard II would do the same, but took it a step further by building a small palace here in the 1390s, as accommodation for his hunting trips in the nearby area. You can see the remains of some impressive apartment chambers, the Great Hall, and catering rooms like the kitchen and buttery. This two-storey space contained storage and service areas on the ground floor, whilst the majority of the upper floor was taken with the Great Hall. Access to the kitchens was to the west, and holes for the beams to hold the upper floor can still be seen. King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn were known to have been guests in this Great Hall. On the other side of the inner bailey was the constable's house, the person responsible for looking after the castle. Sir Robert Ashton was constable from 1376 to 81, and he added this tower, now known as Ashton Tower, as an extension of his home. The castle also acted as a prison at various times in its history, and prisoners of many different nationalities and backgrounds were brought here to Porchester in the course of wars. As we enter the keep, we see a theatre that was created by the French prisoners during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars of 1793 to 1815. The theatre has not survived in the ground floor, but has been recreated so that we can get an idea of what it looks like. Housing an audience of up to 300 tightly packed in, 
plays were performed to keep up morale. Even locals of Portsmouth were allowed to come and see the shows for a period of time. Climbing the spiral staircase, we reached the first floor, which in the 12th century was used as accommodation, with a central wall creating two chambers on each of the four floors. A well in the corner providing water. An alternative stepped entrance into the keep, likely added much later, allow us to look out over the inner bailey. Access to each floor was by the spiral staircase, but a more modern set of stairs have been added inside for today's visitors. On the second floor we find faint remains of wall paintings. In the 19th century the castle became a tourist attraction, with pleasure gardens and events. The paintings depict this period, and this floor was believed to have been used for another theatre. Exhibits and information boards around the tower explain more events in the castle's history, some of which we've already spoken of. We would have liked to have seen the views from the very top of the tower, but the winds that day meant it was sadly closed for views of the Solent and Harbour. We had to be content with views through windows on the third floor. Before we leave the castle and head for the pretty castle street, let's walk to the water gate. Like the land gate, this replaced the Roman entrance, but earlier in around the 1320s. Protecting the fort with a portcullis, this would have been the entrance used by visitors arriving and departing on vessels. You can walk around the outer walls of the fort and notice how close to the shoreline the fort is. Its low-lying land is susceptible to flooding. The village of Porchester grew up in and around the fort and castle. Taking a stroll along Castle Street, we can see some wonderful buildings that have retained their charm and beauty from a number of eras. The Cormorant is the only remaining public house of the six that once occupied the streets of Porchester. A nice place to grab a pint and some lunch.
The village extends much further than just this pretty street, with more modern and recent homes and businesses, so we'll finish our tour of the castle and the area here. We hope you've enjoyed our tour around this important and hidden part of Portsmouth. Do join us again for more videos across the UK and abroad. Thanks for watching the Memory Seekers.